Welcome to Legends of Greyskull, the podcast that dives deep into the mythology of Masters of the Universe, with your hosts Matthew Dooch and Sean Scavana. News, reviews, remasterings, and more are just ahead on Legends of Greyskull. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 84 of Legends of Grayskull, the fan podcast where we discuss the history, the mystery, the magic, and mythology of He-Man, She-Ra, Eternity, Ethereum, and Order, Primus, New Adventures, Soul Adventures, Lady Bird, UK Annuals, Golden Books, Mini Comics, anything and everything you can think of with that He-Man, She-Ra, Masters of the Universe, that Netflix He-Man and the Masters of the Universe logo. I'm Matthew. Here again with Sean Skavarna. Sean, how are we doing today? I'm here. I am. I am here. <laughs> I was not prepared to answer that question right now, to be honest. It's the um, same question I ask you question, every episode. I never, I never rehearsed that part. Never, <laughs> never prepared to actually I wanted, start. I wanted, I wanted to feel like I actually have something to contribute. And then when I open my mouth, I'm like, I'm here. And that's about it. And it's sorry. And it's sad. So, yes. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready to talk some CGI because we've dabbled upon it, but we have, yeah, we have season two. That's right. This folks. is that episode. Stay tuned at at the end. The last segment of the episode will be our CGI season two uh, spoiler filled review because that's the only way we can mm-hmm. do it. We dabbled with the idea of like doing spoiler free reviews, and even when we tried doing a spoiler free section, <laughs> it's like within a couple sentences we're like. And Vader is Luke's father. Oh shit! I, uh, yep. Spoilers, I guess. Yeah. So we d- we don't yeah. do it. If you want to be spoiled, come come listen to it. If you don't want to be spoiled, go watch the show, which I don't know why you haven't yet. Spoiler alert! It is phenomenal. Um, not to say it's perfect, but it is phenomenal. No. Yeah. So we'll get to that uh, real quick here. I do want to throw some shout outs. Uh, first off, I want to plug our good friend Ronald Zerigian, Mr. Skelly Vader himself. As most of you know, him on Facebook. He does the excellent uh, dioramas. Uh, he does the uh, Motu Misfits though on those wood panels. Um, mm-hmm. I know I got a few. I think you have one, don't you, Sean? He gifted us uh, yes, when we started right. yep. our show. He gifted us. I have a merman. From that's right. That's right. So, yeah, wonderful artist, great guy, and he is in a contest right now on DIYHero.org vying for a grand prize of 25000 to use towards his hobby. So, you know, make it, he wants to kind of expand in woodworking and everything. Um, he's got a great write-up on the website. I got the link down below. Uh, click over there. It's free to vote for him. The whole thing runs for two weeks. I think we're about day five or so. So get in there, vote for him. Everybody gets one free vote daily. So every day click back on and help him out. And then you can also get extra votes if you donate to the American Lung Association. So help out a good cause and help out a good guy. Win-win in my opinion. So get over there and vote for him. Link down below. Um, secondly, also to do with voting... If you notice, we got mm-hmm. a logo up top. Yeah, there. there's a theme here. <laughs> we are in the midst of Legends of Grey School presents Mo2 March Madness. For most of you that are familiar with the NCAA basketball world, they run their famous uh, March Madness tournament during the month of March. Uh, we kind of hijacked that theme, but we decided to use classics action figures. So we came up to, with the help of our Legendati group. That's right, I used the D. Uh, to help whittle all of the Classics figures, over 200 of them, down to a Sweet 16, which is now vying for who will be crowned champion of the Classics action figures. So um, let me pull that up right quick here, and I will actually tell you who the Sweet 16 are. Uh, so we've got, for our Sweet 16, we've got, these are all the classics action figures. So, Evil Lynn, Rantlor, Clawful, the original He-Man, Too Bad, Moss Man, Whiplash, Beast Man, Trapjaw, Leech, 
Snake Armor He-Man, Fisto, Merman, Buzz Off, New Adventure Skeletor, and God Skeletor. So, they are gonna they each have a matchup every day for this first week. There are two games a day. The first game is live right now, and that <clears throat> excuse me. That is uh, Evelyn versus Ratlore. So you guys get to help decide which of these two classics figures will move on to the second round of the Mar Motu March Madness. Really simple way to, to decide. Head over to our Legends of Grayskull podcast Facebook group or onto our Instagram account Legends, at Legends of Grayskull podcast. And just comment there who you want to advance. The Each game will last for 24 hours, and then a winner will be declared. Well, approximately 24 hours, because, you know, I get distracted. But it should be a <laughs> lot of fun, and you guys get to decide. So for the first week starting today, Wednesday, March 16th, hopefully I get this episode out today. It depends on how, much, how many F-bombs Sean drops and how much editing I have to do. But, uh, yeah, so we'll have, we got the morning game and we have an afternoon game every day from now through Saturday. And then tune in. We're going to go live either Sunday or Monday. We'll be sure to announce ahead of time. And we'll recap each round of the tournament as it progresses. So, should be a lot of fun. Help us get the vote out. Help decide your champion out of these Sweet 16 of Classic figures. And... As Manny Gonzalez pointed out, if you have a Facebook and an Instagram, you know, feel free to vote on both of your accounts. So, mm -hmm. Two furs. Two furs. Rock that vote. <laughs> all right. I think that's all my plugs. Sean, you got anything uh, new, recent? You want to you wanna plug, show off? Well. Anything. Now's the time. I got, I got, well, you almost fell off. Yeah, this bad boy the other day. Oh, yes, the CGI he was, action figure of Trapjaw. He was one that I really wanted to get my hands on, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm a fan. I love this design. I, I actually, I hope they do a Cronus at some point. Yeah, I think. Because I, think I, I really like his design, too. I mean, they're, they're doing Adam, so they might as well go oh, for no, it, but no. then hey. they, you cannot hold that up to the screen and not shoot that missile at it. Come on. It's, I'll it's do our, it in a second. It's our I want, thing. This one's the one I'm most excited about. Oh, he got something else, ready? too. All he's got, got is CGI He-Man atop battle, top cat. battle cat. Nice. I got a battle cat. I went into Target, and they had a, they had four of them. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're doing this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah, here we go. I'll do the shooting here. Here we go, the action. Get it in there. Er, Action Power picture. attack! There we go. There we go. And he doesn't have the it's ability to the stop room. the show over there. <laughs> they actually most no, of them no. work pretty well. I think Ram Mams is the only one I've been disappointed in. Everyone else actually does a decent job, and uh, it's just kind of fun it being. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna have him help me co-host, but no. <laughs> it's kind of fun with those that they went the the. Manual route instead of spring loaded. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it's to help keep the cost down and the regulations and everything else. But I don't know. It's it's kind of a fun throwback because back in the day, yeah, we had spring loaded stuff, but not everything was. And it the toy industry kind of seemed to get to a point where everything was spring loaded. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know, just kind of refreshing to see something different. But they're great yeah, representations. I, I mean, honestly. I never would have thought I'd want to pick these up, but after I got them for my son, now I'm like, well, geez, these are fun enough that I want to put some of these favorites at least on my on my shelf. I don't need it. I don't know if I need everybody, yeah. but uh, I mean, uh, like Man at Arms is kind of like a eh, maybe I'll get him, maybe I won't. Yeah. But if I see um, uh, obviously Manny Faces, he's he's a must have at yes. this point. So Man I think yeah. Manny Faces and Orca were my two must have. Mm -hmm. like they're just on back. And Adam, now that I know him. The Adam it, looks with nice. him, it's like, I, mm -hmm. I, I would like him because, again, if it captures the look of the show, and since how much I like the show, it's yeah. like, well, there you go. It makes, yeah. me, it makes me happy to have that. Yeah, you know? been, it's, it's just like being a kid again. You have that representation right there of 
what you love from the cartoon you're watching or whatever. And that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to get every unique character. I don't need all the mm-hmm. variants. You know, like like I said, I got the bike He-Man and Skeletor and Man Arms. So I don't feel a need to get the the, the single carded ones. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, Power Grayskull He-Man, I got that because he's translucent and I'm a sucker, but you know. But that's kind of where I am. Like, if I can get a representation of each character, I'm good. So, now, see the one the one thing that they're putting out. And I've seen it now. Uh, they're doing that two pack. Yeah, yeah. And it also comes with one uh, with those uh, drones. The, yep. That Skeletor uses. So there's a part of me looking at that, and going, "Do I ever want this? Do I not? Because that's kind of fun." That. I mean, there are paint variations, and it's like the 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 energy runes runes I should say not ruins runes yep. are on He Man's uh, arms and stuff, and then Skeletor's painted a little bit. I think it's all arm is yellow now or something. Yeah, it's it's glowing with like, the havoc. Power. Yeah, yep. the havoc power. Yeah, so that one's one where I'm like, because eh, I I um I said it before, but I like that. Uh, the the ground ripper he man is the uh, the two thousand X color scheme a little more so that was like that'll be my version but then I ended up picking up the normal version anyway right and then I just was like all right fine I'm in <laughs> for a, I'm in for a pounding on this but fine I'll take it so uh, you gotta love it <clears throat> oh I got a box in the mail yesterday from our wonderful friend oh. Jesse Arnold and he did uh. He did decorate it up there a little bit, Cabal above all. Look at that. He is he's definitely becoming indoctrinated. And you realize Oh, he He has like he, completely he, us to blame. You realize that, right? Like yeah, everything I, every path I, he's going down. He it, what's what's funny is he, he started looking at the line by himself, but I went over to his place uh, like last summer. There was this one night we were hanging out, and we were going through Big Bad Toy Store on our phones, going, "Hey, here's a Mythic Legions guy I want. Here's this one. Here's this one." And we were just doing that the whole night, and, and maybe start like getting my feet wet into maybe I'll start wanting to pick some of these up. And now he's getting shirts from Legions Lair with his name on it. Yep, and yep. He's going to all the comic or the the toy conventions. And, ch- and chasing after the horseman, just like uh, <laughs> Steve Bashotti is half the time. It's like, my God, he's he's in for it. So. Well, not only that, but like my wife is gonna kill me. He became a patron yeah. of them. He got yeah, like you know. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he hugged Steve Zolocon just as much as I did. So. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the uh, the same path we'd gone down, and we're just, yes, we're, we're yeah. sucking him down it. Uh, ah. he, usually, he and I follow each other in certain places when it comes to geekdom, so it doesn't surprise me. So yeah, so from but you got a lot of stuff. Yeah, here. He, oh, is this what uh, is this from the con? Yep, he hooked me up. We got uh, from Zolo Khan. He picked me up the uh, skeleton, another skeleton Legion builder. So that grows. Yep. I uh, got my first orc Legion builder, which is one that I was after the sale. I'm kind of like, man, I wish I'd gotten a little bit more. And uh, mm-hmm. so let me be able to pick that up. And then uh, Vorthog. Who was nice. a regret that I never picked up out of the Aerithere wave? So, I think I now have most of the Aerithere wave. Um, Same here. Yeah, really, and really, the only one I'm still kind of after is Magnus. So, uh, and then he you lost want Magnus now, huh? Yeah, I thought that's I told, a surprise. I, thought I told you that. No, because you said you didn't like any of the human characters for yeah, so long. But then I opened the night. Remember? You yeah, but I didn't know you wanted Magnus all? then. Yeah. I pay attention to your post. I could have sworn I put that in the message that I wanted. I, I, I think you did, but I I was thinking Borthog, and then all of a sudden when you say Magnus, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you're now getting into my territory where human characters are okay, too. This yeah. is interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, you can't mm. open a figure of <laughs> Mythic Legions. Um, and, and then, of course, Jesse, just being the good guy that he is, he also threw in a Cabal sticker, mm-hmm. which... Yeah, nice. another another shameless plug here, but yeah, guys, if you're a Mythic Legions fan and you're not in the Cabal, there's really no reason not to. It's a, it, it is a mostly fun group. It's got its drama like every group, but if you're mm-hmm. into Mythic Legions, it is the place to be. Um, yeah, I mean, 
the, the real quick about the cabal if you want to see what the extent of this line is you can follow some of the people in there and see what they do with these figures because they don't have to just be the figures you buy you could they they turn them into something yep, yep. where you're like how where can i buy this you can't it's one there's this version and that's it and it will make you appreciate the line even more Absolutely. And then he also was nice enough to gift me yep. a horseman uh, sword. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it does it have another name or is it just the horseman sword? I think it's just the horseman sword, I but so I could too. be wrong. But yeah, it's a beautiful yep. it's sword with the, the four horsemen horse head logo as the hilt there. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful piece. One of those I've kind of eyed here and there. And then he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to send you one. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> so yeah, great they were guy. giving them out at the table when you bought something. Which uh, he he was in front of me. He's like, I just got the sword for free, and then I I got my stuff. I'm like, I don't think they gave me a sword. I come home. I'm like, they gave me a sword. That's yeah, cool. so, yeah, I got one too. Yeah, it's very nice of so. them. So I appreciate Jesse, and I can't wait to to bust those open. And like, yeah, worth looks even better. That's the problem. It's getting them in person. It's always the problem. Because I can look at pictures on the internet all day long and go, no, I don't need him. No, I don't need him. But then you get, you see him in person, and it's like, yeah, I need him. <sighs> well, I was like that about goblins. And yeah. now I have, I, I got the Goblin Legion Builder. And I actually have, I should be getting a Nook Nook pretty soon uh, through a deal. And I want Nox really bad. So there you go. <laughs> I can't win. And that's how it goes. Exactly. All right. So why don't we pop on over and discuss some news. So, as most of you know, la oh no, on our mini-sode, we talked about this image. Coming to your collection with five silhouettes. So, uh, yeah, so far we had, obviously in the middle there, was 2000X He-Man. And mm -hmm. then the to the right of him, well, to the right of us, left of him, uh, is an Origins Tila, which I know we both speculated. Now, I said it could be either 2000X Tila because of the sword. And I don't remember what you said. Did you have? I figured it probably was a Tila, but I I wasn't sure. Oh, maybe I said it was it was it, anti Eternia maybe because they were starting yeah, to yeah, go yeah, anti Eternia yeah. with some of these figures. And then towards the end of our discussion, I threw out that maybe it was the rumored uh, Tila Zor two pack, which yes, it mm -hmm. did it did turn out to be the Tila Zor two pack, and she does have the two thousand X sword. You know, it's basically yep. the same color scheme. I think the gold's a bit shinier on her, but. That seemed to be about the mm -hmm. only difference. So, yesterday, and we'll come back to this image in a minute here at the end. But yesterday, we did get treated to a new picture, which is the new Masterverse villains. Yeah. So they been they released that one with the heroes, which we talked on the mini so Go check that out. Um, of the origins. So now we have the new Masterverse villains. And I was surprised because there is actually a lot of new stuff here. So we've got the Masterverse New Eternia Jitsu. We got Masterverse Hordak. Mm -hmm. We've got, well, these are all Masterverse, so I guess I can stop saying that. But we've got a Catra, a Beastman, and a CGI Skeletor. So. Mm hmm. Um, not going to specifics yet, but were you surprised by how much they showed off yesterday? I was because I figured that those initial, those silhouettes were just going to be, this is the next wave and be done with yes. it. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh, so how many waves are we getting past, you know, what they showed? And apparently every time they do something so far, Monday and Tuesday, they keep saying, stay tuned, the rest of the week will have more reveals. So apparently right. we're just going to keep getting a flood of these throughout the week. Well, I guess that's it. Because after, so, yeah, after the surprised. Origins picture came out, 
because that had the Sun Man three yep. figures, and then you know the two that were teased, and then they also showed King Randor. So I was kind of expecting one like that with like all. So okay, so that was the Masterverse or the Origins reveal. Now we had the Masterverse reveal, but the fact that they specifically just revealed the villains. You know, mm-hmm. with more than what was teased, was you know, significantly more than what was teased was interesting. Yeah. So let's jump through one by one here. So first up, we have Masterverse Jitsu. And I've got to say, I don't recall if they confirmed it or not, but i got to say that this has to be part of the new Eternia line. Because while he sports his regular armor, he's also got a face mask mm-hmm. um a, gaunt- a bigger gauntlet and he's got a new waist piece so yeah and then of course he comes with his classic katana blade and a vac metal golden fist yeah thoughts um i honestly i I do miss the way that with um, classics, mm-hmm. he had personality in his expression. This, he's very blank expression. But the thing that I like about it on the other side is they're giving you stuff you never got before with that figure. Yeah. And now you're making them into this version of him versus like uh, 2000X had their specific version of it, even though it was a staction. Yep. And you know, class or classics did their thing, vintage did their thing, origins. So I can appreciate that because the fact that he has the face piece is interesting. That kind of makes him feel like Scorpion uh, from Mortal Kombat a little mm-hmm. bit for me. Um, and then that that uh, belt loin piece that they have now it, is interesting. And then it makes me go, well, reuse wise, are they going to do that somewhere else to another character, or is that just specifically him? But, I, I think yeah. that's it. The, the the little additions that they've done kind of help make him a little more unique. Especially if you mm-hmm. consider by the end of the vintage line, you know, Randor reused his armor. And yep. other than that, he's got the fist and a head. Like, that's pretty much it that makes Jitsu special. I mean, even the... Mm-hmm. I want to say even the blade was reused by uh, Ninjor. So, so it's just kind of... They've taken some steps to make him his a more unique character, um, and he does have the new hairstyle with kind of that bun on top. I don't even top know what you, is it. It's I guess, that but like, I guess it'd be kind of maybe. I'm but wrong top knot is usually more part. of like a round bun. I thought this is yeah. like that flat, flat top knot. I don't know if there's there's probably know. a good name for it that I just don't or, know. The, uh, kind the of, funny thing is, the bald man is trying to help you figure out what a hairstyle looks like. So that's it's the blind leading the blind trick. <laughs> well, that's it. It's I, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those I haven't seen it. Uh, it's it's more like a sumo wrestler. Like the, yeah, they usually have Which, that. that. That should be given to that uh, the new origins character because he's he's space sumo. I mean. But he's ninja. It's like all this stuff is coming to the surface now with these toy lines. It's like, yeah, in the eighties we didn't know what we were saying. We just put ninja or sumo on something and hope to God it worked for kids. Because back so, in the eighties, ninja go. was awesome. I'm probably gonna say it wrong, but it, it but according to sumo wrestling dot fandom dot com, uh, it is the Chon Maj. It is a form of okay. Japanese top knot. Worn by men, it is commonly associated with the Edo period and samurai, and in recent times with sumo wrestlers. It was originally okay. a method of using hair to hold a samurai helmet steady atop the head in battle, and became a status symbol among Japanese society. Uh, Interesting. In the traditional Edo era, chonmaj, the top of the head is shaved, the remaining hair is oiled and waxed, before being tied into a small tail folded onto the top of the head. So yeah, that's kind of, they kind of made a ponytail and folded it up. That's a good way of describing mm. it for our audio mm-hmm. listeners. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting. Like I said, they've taken some steps to kind of make him a bit more unique. In my opinion, this is the weakest of the reveals. Um, mm-hmm. 
granted, Jitsu has never been, like, a fan favorite of mine, so I'm sure that plays a part in it, but, um, it's one of those, it's like, he looks good, but he's not a must-have for me. Yeah, the, honestly, like, the Vintage Classics and 2000X were, that was more like, ooh, like, visually stunning, and this one for me is definitely, like, a few steps down from that it, just the way I think when I think Jitsu, I think more in you know classics or or two thousand X, I guess. And this is like we're getting them. That's cool, but it's also weird. Like you said, is it New Eternia or is it just their version of Jitsu? Because he didn't show up in Revelation, so this sure. is like a whole open world idea of okay, what are we doing with this figure now? Absolutely. Yeah, I. That's why I've, I got to kind of go to New Eternia because that's like those have been the subsets revealed so far. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. really fit into anything else. I guess the closest would be that the 2000 X Staction did kind of have a similar waist, you know, that rope belt with the the pads, but mm -hmm. but then they've changed enough, so I, I think it's going to be New Eternia. But mm -hmm. time will tell. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, next up, we have the ruthless leader of the evil horde, Hordak. This one took me completely by surprise. Um, number one, that he he is blue with the white face, uh, <laughs> he, and, and and the accessories. He, so he mm -hmm. comes with the cape, which they have been doing amazing work with those capes. The the fabric on this line. He comes with two alternate hands he comes with the arm cannon with a blast effect with that robotic uh three fingered pincer hand that he has in a lot of the she episodes uh mm -hmm. he comes with a crossbow with a cool energy effect on it and he comes with the bat shield wow <laughs> this one this one blew me away like, this is a must-get for me. You know I love my Filmation Hordak. This one is very much that, um, along with the cape and everything. But And I love I love the crossbow, which I'm not a huge fan of the Horde crossbows. Even though I loved them as a kid, they just... But something about the way they did that, where... Kind of what we all did, because the crossbows popped, but they didn't actually shoot anything. So we all kind of imagined that they were shooting, like, energy blasts. But the way they actually mm -hmm. did it, where it looks like an energy arrow, like, cocked in there. And the yeah. eyes glowing. I thought that was a really neat effect. Um, that is kind of what I imagined happening as a kid. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I'm wondering, are they going to have a more like a... The way they did like Trap Jaw and Triclops, where he's a deluxe figure, or is he going to yeah. just be here? He is, and they're just going to have the stuff in the box and the, in the standard box. It's a lot of stuff to come with. I thought about that. I, I'm leaning towards he's probably going to be a deluxe, that slightly higher price point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, there was somebody that did a uh, comparison, and I, I wish I, I had the photo up right now. I saw it earlier today. They they showed um, the the SDCC Hordak from Classics that was the filmation color yeah. scheme. Then they showed uh, Classics Hordak, and they showed the Super Seven Hordak that they came out with. Then they showed um, uh, what was it Mondo, and then they showed this one. And yeah, this one I think for the, at least the face sculpt is a little like. Oh, for me, it, it, the face doesn't wow me, but the amount of stuff in it is like, oh, well, if even if the face doesn't wow you, like I, we had the same problem with uh, uh, Origins He-Man and, and Skeletor when they those came out, and then they had different versions that came out later that looked better. It's like you know, it, maybe there is a chance they'll do a different horde after you can swap the head off or something. Maybe. But. Because it just feels to me like his head is almost like pushed from the sides. He's almost too narrow looking <clears> compared <throat> to the way that I view him from like the original, also filmation and everything else. I feel they used a blend, honestly, of the 
Netflix, uh, yeah, Shira, Hordak, and Hordak. Like it's not it's not quite either, but there are definitely yeah. some design elements that it seems like they pulled from that. With like you said, the face is a little slimmer. The eyes, I think, are a little narrower. I think that that's a mm-hmm. good way to describe it. But uh, but honestly, it kind of works for me. And that I felt Hordak was one of the best design characters out of that Netflix Shira series. So, mm-hmm. oh yeah. He's a must get, absolutely. <laughs> and the ener- the energy effects translucent on that crossbow too. So. Well, there you they sold right there. <laughs> I know how you are about it. I love it. Uh, next <laughs> up, we've got Catra. This is the yeah. one where I was like, "Wow, really? We're going there? Mm-hmm. Like we knew they were going to launch that Shira subset." You know, mm-hmm. and you know what? It just occurred to me. Maybe this Hordak is going to be in the Shira subset, and then they release the Gray Hordak in, you know, the the He Man subset. It's possible. You know, because they're. I guess that's kind of with them doing Shira. I didn't expect them to do a whole wave of Shira. Mm-hmm. Like I just figured it's like, all right, here's Shira. Then maybe. You know, then maybe we get Catra or Glimmer or like, you know, peppered throughout. Mm-hmm. But with these two reveals now and the fact that we've seen leaked images of a Shira and we've also seen some less reputable le- leaked images of a Frosta, it kind of leads me to believe like, hey, there's going to be a whole wave of mm-hmm. Shira figures, which. I, I just, I never thought about it. I never expected them to do this. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, it'll be... It, uh, I mean, who knows, by the end of the week, we might even know Shira's on her way, for all we know. Uh, we'll get to speculation <laughs> right at the end, but yeah, I'm on, the, I'm on yeah. the same mindset. But yeah, to, back to Catra here. Uh, so... And here's the other surprising thing again. Okay, Hordak came in blue. Like, that's, that's a mm. pretty... That's a pretty easy variant to do without even stepping on NBC, DreamWorks, or Universal's toes, whoever they are now. Mm -hmm. But this Catra is pure filmation. She is in her red outfit, you know, the skirt, the, the, the red cat mask with the green eyes, the black hair, purple cape. Mm -hmm. Um, now she does come with the toy inspired cat shield, which looks great. And they made it bigger which i love Mm. because those she-ra shields yeah say that three times she-ra shields were always they were a small shield and classics continued them in that scale i actually like the bigger looking shield here it looks more effective more battle ready um and then she also comes with this staff which is silver with a green jewel on top Which I want to say is from something, but I can't place it. I want to say it's probably from a Filmation episode or maybe a mini-comic or magazine. It looks so familiar to me, but my mind just cannot place it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I was actually, like you, I was was pretty surprised out of anybody who were going to see her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But... It, the the thing is, like, um, there are people out there that are like, oh, you could put these in with classics, and it, it you know, they they kind of blend in in, in that way. And so when I saw that one, I'm like, my god, that that is that's a really good case in point. When you yes. see her, and it, uh, like you said, there is that leaked Frosta image that's out there. It's like when you look at some of those, it's like, man, those actually they could pull off being right there on your shelf with classics and you have no problem if you don't want to buy the uh, classics if they're too expensive now. Right. But yeah, she, she looks like there is nothing about her that I looked at and said, this isn't right. Or this makes me a little, it, it all of it was like, yeah, that's cash. There's right. no way around it. And I was, I was pretty impressed by that. And I am someone who never managed to get a Catra figure from classics. And that's exactly what I thought when I saw, it. I'm like, I get to get, a Catra figure to fit into my collection for yeah. twenty two dollars. 
And I think mm-hmm. she's easily up over 100 now, the Classics version. So, mm-hmm. it's a win-win in my opinion. But yeah, I'm loving her. The only thing that gives me hesitation is that they don't show her with the mask up. Now, I, I mm. not to say that it doesn't go up, but I'm just a little nervous that it doesn't. You know what I mean? So, I, as long as I can I would, set that atop the head, I'll be good. I would probably look at the jitsu figure and go, well, they showed that that comes off of his mouth, that faceplate that he has. So, I'm, I'd say you're maybe better than 50-50 shot of that's something you just pop on and pop off just like classic. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But if, I agree. They didn't show an alternate head, but right? if you, or if, at least you know an unmasked. If you zoom in, I do believe there is a shadow, like on her on her cheeks. So it, like it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't look sculpted to her face mm-hmm. at least. So that gives me uh, reason good good reason to believe that it's removable. But I, I would also love to see a picture of it moved. <laughs> Um, and then next up, last up, no, the second to last, we have the Beast Man. Mm-hmm. What you think about Beast Man? I, Beast Man, I, I'm just going to say, Beast Man is one of those characters that in my mind, I have this version of how I feel he should be. And the closest I ever saw was 2000X. And this one is like, it's almost like a hodgepodge of Masterverse and and 2000X kind of had a weekend away in Vegas. And this, <laughs> this is the version of that you get. And I I, I like aspects of it. But I, I I like that there is this fur trim you could put on him now. So there is that like, like a pelt. Yeah. It, it looked like there was like this fur piece. I don't yeah. have it in front of my face unfortunately but there, there is a, a fur piece that does add a little something to it which i think is fun um i i actually i like it more than not but like i said just in my own head canon it doesn't fit in but with what we've seen so far i, I want to see him in scale that's the other thing they don't really have him next to another figure he looks like he'll be a little bigger but maybe i'm wrong yeah i mean i can i think Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell when they're on the podium if that's actually in scale or not. But he's definitely mm-hmm. wider. Like, he's wider yeah. than Kadra, obviously. Even wider than Hordak and Jitsu. Um, the legs look more muscular. But yeah, it's 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 a good-looking figure. Like you said, it's got that fur pelt with the, mm-hmm. the harness that's very inspired by the original Mark Taylor concept art. And then he comes with that that helmet that looks like the bare head of that concept art, which is kind of interesting, right? Because you think mm-hmm. if they were going to go there that they'd just do that as a head, but instead they do it as like a helmet piece for Beastman, mm-hmm. which is an interesting interpretation. Um, but the fact that you get those pieces to kind of make him look a bit more like that concept art, but then you also get everything to make him look like the vintage Beastman. You get the the toy-ish, you know, harness. You get the shoulder pads. You get an excellent head, you know. I even kind of ha- like how they updated the loincloth with that little beast piece of fabric with, like, the rune, rune symbols on it. Yeah. You know? I like that, too. The, yeah. He's got the whip. He's got the bulk. He's got he's got everything. You can make him the version of Beastman you want him to be. Oh, and then he comes mm-hmm. with that, that spiked bat as well. So... Mm-hmm. Which is the first time he's come with an alternate weapon yep. that I could think of, right? He, he's yep. always had the whip otherwise. Yeah, yep, exactly. So, yeah, he looks like a massive brute of a figure. And again, as someone who doesn't have a Classics Beast Man, I think this will look really good on the shelf with my Classics collection. You know? And that's... That kind of seems to be the niche that they wanted to start this Masterverse line off as. And, like, for me, the Revelation figures don't quite fit in there. But what they're doing now is really starting to hit those points where it's like, okay, this can be my Beastman. I love the Revelation Mm -hmm. Beastman, but that is clearly Revelation Beastman. 
Like, this mm. one, I can do him upright and have him be the beast man on my show. Yeah, when when they revealed the uh, images of that yesterday, I did see there was there was somebody in one of the groups that he said if this was an easy pass for him because the Revelation Beast Man is the one that he wants the most. And I just kind of sat there scratching my head. I'm like, that's your opinion, and there's nothing yep. wrong with that. But I'm like, my version of Beast Man will always have he will have like the harness on yep. him and all Something, that stuff. Yep. And it, uh, you know, it's like that. That's part of what made him so. He, he looks he looks just menacing with that on and it, right. it it plays up like the main like you know he's the king of the beasts in Absolutely. that way and you know it's like revelation did their thing but it, it, that design never really worked for me compared to give me the traditional version so absolutely agree and last up we have you know yeah, i guess you could say big surprise but we also kind of called it we have CGI He-Man in the Master of the Universe Skeletor done in the Masterverse style. And obviously it was teased right from the beginning that they were going to do CGI characters in the Masterverse style. And we were all very curious as to how they would do it. Mm -hmm. And I think they nailed it. They, mm -hmm. It is not just... The Masterverse aesthetic painted in CGI colors or anything like that. There is definitely a lot of new pieces on here. And it, it's got that chunky Pixar ripoff mm -hmm. aesthetic. So, mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I what, what is it that the girls do? The sweet thing that they do when they're excited... I literally did that in my car when I saw the photo yesterday because <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. We knew we were going to get him as in, as in CGI characters. We didn't know we were going to get Skeletor this quickly. Right. And when I saw it, I'm like, this is exactly what I was hoping they would do with this. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier because Again, you know, like I classics wise, I have all the figures I want. I'm not really worrying about uh, getting the Masterverse to fill in any holes I have. Yep. So that's why that line has not done it for me the way I was thinking it would. But now this is finally like the minute I see that, I'm going to be like jumping to the peg, ripping it off, and running to the register. Because yep. uh, these new figures, like I showed off Trapjaw at the beginning and, and Battle Cat and everything, they're great. But for me, being who I am, this is exactly what I was waiting to see if they would, if they could knock it out of the park or not. And they absolutely did with their image. Absolutely, the little detail, the paint is phenomenal. All the little, the havoc energy on the havoc staff, you know, on Skeletor's neck, the the mm -hmm. belt piece, the the skeletal hand, like it all looks phenomenal. They even have the chain. Going from the, the Havoc staff to Skeletor's yep. wrist, as we see, uh -huh. you know, end of season one into season two, where he's, you know, fully committed, chained everybody to the power of Havoc. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it, it's phenomenal. It, every, every single level that I could have hoped that they would do that with this, they did. And for me, being who I've been ever since they put out Origins and every, all this other stuff, Yep. I was like, just watch. There'll be something about this that even I'll be like, come on, you almost got it. And it's like, very first time I can look at it and go, you got yep. it. That's amazing. Yep. I so can, and cross I can't fingers, He-Man works too. Yes. Exactly. That I, I hope this week we see a He-Man at least for that part. And I'm hoping to God they knock that one out of the park too. Because if they got the two of them going, I, I am going to be so pumped, especially with Trapjaw. Yeah. Trapjaw is one of my absolute favorite designs on the entire series. So if they can pull him and Beast Man off, oh dear lord, you got my money right there. So All right, so let's yeah. go back to the original teaser for a minute here. So coming to your collection, five silhouettes. We got 2000 X He Man in the middle. We've got to his left, our right, we've got the Tila Zor two pack. Mm -hmm. And then on the lower podium, I think we have we are confirmed that that was Jitsu. Jitsu. So, yeah. um, to yep. the to our left of 2000X He-Man, still saying that's Sun-Man, which I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. see in the next reveal, because 
We got Origins. We got Masterverse Villains. So I have no doubt that our next reveal is Masterverse Heroes. Mm -hmm. Now that figure Agreed. on the far left... I called that, I, well, I think we were all over the place. We were throwing Beastman out, we threw Skeletor out, I think we even threw CGI Trapjaw out there. Mm-hmm. After the reveals yesterday, I personally called it as, okay, that was Skeletor. Sean nope. is not convinced of that. Not at all, because okay. Skeletor, he has the skeleton hand, and that hand on that figure is big. And it's also in the exact wrong position than what they revealed yesterday because they've been keeping them in the positions they revealed them in. So they're... No, 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 no. Jitsu is not in the same position. If you look at Jitsu, he's, he's got his hand up, he's facing towards Tila, and he's got the sword is going across like his knee, like he's holding the sword down. And the picture they revealed has Jitsu holding the sword up in the opposite direction. All right. So I they have not. The and, they have and, not. And he may have been the same. I think. So I think they least. were in the same position. Um, but that hand is way too big for that skeleton hand because his skeleton <sighs> hand is is smaller and slender compared to the the big havoc or the big fist that would be with the havoc staff that they have. And but there's but hang there's on, I'm, I'm going to argue your point by point here. But on this picture, we cannot see his other hand, the one that would be holding the havoc staff. That is off behind the curtain. Remember, he cuts off at the shoulder. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, we were already questioning the scale on these things, you know, especially yeah. with the Photoshop. So to me, that could, that hand could be smaller than the hand we can't see. Look, I'm doing it on my camera right now. You see what I'm saying? But I understand, but I feel like that the hand that you're seeing in the silhouette is still too large for what you're seeing on the skeleton hand that they are going to have there. Because no matter what, that hand in all the versions I have, which the 5.5 no. and the 8.5 inch one, that hand is always smaller. Right. It's, it's the more petite of the two hands that he has, no matter what. It's petite. <laughs> Agreed. I'm just saying. I think. I think so, the the images getting spliced together here could be messing with mm, the scale. It, um, and it's then what possible. Was, what was your last point? I'm sorry, I cut you off because I wanted to get to that. There, there's thing like uh, he stands upright and he doesn't have the hunch. The way that the, I feel like there's a hunch there, and you're only seeing bits of like hairs coming out the top of that hunch of where the hair would be on the figure. So I'm still I'm still figuring it could be a CGI beast man, or there has been uh, a leaked thing that possibly it could be another version of Beast Man somehow. But I don't see why there'd be another version of Beast Man uh, when we already have the version of Beast Man that we talked about right. on this episode. So the other option is I guess I guess no. I still think it's CGI something because those hands are so big and right, that that's is okay. definitely a trademark of those figures. It feels like series. it feels like a CGI aesthetic. I completely agree there. But mm -hmm. that's my thing. So but if they've revealed the Masterverse villains today, like the only thing I can think of left to reveal is the Masterverse heroes. Mm-hmm. And to me, that silhouette does not fit the heroes at all. I don't know, because the other thing, too, is... Unless it's a new Eternia if, hero. It, well, there, there's a potential of that, or there is a potential that maybe they're not revealing everything, even if they're doing the reveals. Because <sighs> the, the way I'm looking at it is, okay, if we have Hordak, and we already have Catra, that's two Shira possibilities. Yeah. And then if we have Frosta potentially and maybe Shira, that's two heroes and villains for that wave. So if they're doing CGI, then the chances of if they do He-Man and my guess would be Tila, just throwing it out there, or, or Man-at-Arms or Ram-Man, 
You could have any of those be the two for the CGI and then do Beast Man and Skeletor for the evil yeah. CGI. I guess Potentially. I, I guess I just don't see how they would not reveal all... Because that's a thing, right? Because they've revealed more than what's on this teaser image. So I don't mm-hmm. see why, out of all those figures, they would have put one on there that they're not going to reveal. You know what I mean? Like, Well, the other option is, uh, yes, one, or Monday... They had all the heroes and one villain on the Origins. So That's maybe possible. the but next the, one will be a Masterverse, all heroes, and then it's CGI Beastman also showing maybe, up or something. Maybe. I don't know. I'm curious. And okay. I, I actually, I will say I think it's Beastman over Trapjaw because Trapjaw doesn't have any kind of jagged things on the left side of him because that's all just him. Here's so, something. And there's like I'm horns getting- or something. I'm going to throw something out here that Spikes, just issues. that just <laughs> occurred to me as we're talking here. Because I agree with you. I, I Originally, I was just like, oh, that had to have been Skeletor for all the reasons I've already mentioned. Looking at it now, okay, I could still see it being Skeletor potentially. Obviously, different pose. But my mind went to Beastman when I saw it right away as well. Mm-hmm. You know, my mind's still circling around Beastman. Uh, they released the delu- the deluxe, I don't know, deluxe, but the me- new Eternia of Beastman that they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw out, knowing they already put one Beastman out, knowing that Masterverse Heroes has to be next, that is new Eternia Mossman. Oh, I, you went way on, on a different route than what I was saying. Well, okay. think about it. He's as shared uh, a body type potential. with Beastman yeah. in almost every iteration especially toy wise yeah that those spikes that we're seeing could easily be the roots you know 2000x did a lot of the roots coming off of him you know obviously uh revelation did that you know that could be why his legs don't match up because one of them has the the wood shin guards coming up off him the Mm -hmm. hands the arms look like they have things coming off those are his little sprout wings and mm-hmm. he would, if you're going traditional Moss Man, he would be very similar to a Beast Man. Did not, did not even. I, the way I thought you were gonna go was, I, I thought you were gonna go. Okay, fine. If they already had a Beast Man come out, then that's gonna be Rakaz. Yeah, but Rakaz. But he's too bulky to yeah, be Rakaz. Rakaz is the biggest transformation in the in the CGI series. I, I, I agree. Yeah. So. So. Ah, we'll see. I, I still, we'll see. I'm, I'm still figuring it could be a CGI beast man. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I, did, I, I did not create the promo, it so sh- I don't. Know. It should be today, and obviously we got that Masterverse Sun Man that still needs to be revealed. So again, another tick as to Masterverse yeah. Heroes should be coming next. Whether we see anything else beyond that, you know, who knows? So. Yep. Yeah. Uh switch back over all right guys that's all the new toy news so now let's get into our big thing for today hour in we're getting to our big thing but that's how we roll here at legends of gray skull <laughs> so today we are talking about season two of the CGI He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, streaming now exclusively on Netflix. So, Sean, first, uh, obviously, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. From this point forward, you don't want to be spoiled? Stop listening um, and come back to us after you've seen it. So, obviously, we were both really looking forward to this. Last season ended with Skeletor taking over the throne of Eternos. Excuse me. Uh, And then, you know, him enslaving the royal army. The heroic warriors getting split up uh, with Orko and Tila guarding King Randor back in Eternos and the rest of them getting to Grayskull and getting that teleported before Skeletor could destroy it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were we were full of speculation about where it would end up. And I do have to say, 
the beginning of this season was a slow go for me. And I think that's just because they had built everything up so high stakes, so do or die. And it's a problem a lot of series suffer with where you have a cliffhanger ending that's so up here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, but we got to make this next season last eight episodes. So mm -hmm. we got we to bring it back <laughs> down a little bit. Whereas, yeah. I know me, I'm ready for boom, boom, boom. All right, where's Grace go going? How are they going to get back? How are they going to reunite? Skeletor's going to come after them. And first episode, we get a Sky Race. Yeah. Not that that was a bad episode, but it was just kind of like, you're on the edge of your seat, and we're waiting. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, and um, we, we talked about that, you know. Season finales... And then season openings oh, usually tough. there's a juxtaposition there every time of they're not just going to have it like oh the heroes are just going to launch an assault on the palace because mm -hmm. Skeletor is in there and all that stuff. But yeah, this one uh, I agree. It, it caught me unaware yep. that okay now all of a sudden like even we we speculated. Um, at the end of the first season, you know, the uh, Eldris says, you know, and now a new adventure begins. And yes. we were like, are they going to go there? You know, and I'm not upset that they didn't, but I'm also like, okay, so now uh, through the previews, we knew, and uh, the trailers, we knew that uh, Stratos was going to show up. Well, all of a sudden, it's like, first episode is just basically, here's who Stratos is and stuff. And mm -hmm. to be honest, I was not the biggest fan of that character when he first showed up because he is so full of ego and so full of himself that it made it like uh, the best the best uh, example I could give uh, trying to think of how I I saw Stratos was he's basically the egotistical Will Smith character in every Will Smith movie yes. that he played when he was in his twenties and thirties and. Thankfully, we get a bit of a character arc with him throughout the season. And at the end of the season, I can appreciate him on a different level, and I like him so much better. But he is a character that when he shows up, he just chews the scenery constantly. And it, 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 for me, he grounds some things to a halt because the, it, there was no character that did that the way he does on the first season. Like there was even Skeletor. Skeletor right. was a ham, but you loved how hammy he was. You loved how over the top he was. That's how Skeletor's played ninety nine percent of the time. But when you have a character like Stratos, then all is hey, how you doing? Adventure and all. It's like okay in doses, but man, the <laughs> whole episode was just like. And 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 the thing was, he just kept coming back. And Ram Man being annoyed with him was great because he. She was kind of feeling like how I felt after a certain point. It's like, Adam, get him out of here. It's like, yeah, I don't blame yeah. you. Um, See, I guess, well, let's just let's talk about We're spoiler-filled, so let's talk about Stratos' yeah. character arc throughout this. Because I know it's a big point. Like, the show starts off with him. He's cocky. He's full of himself. He takes on He-Man yeah. in that Sky Race. I guess for me... Um, like, there was enough sewn in there where I'm like... I need to find out more about this character. Like, I was intrigued with Stratos after that first mm -hmm. episode. You know, he mentions he newly became the king. He's very aggressive, very cocky, very full of himself. And so I'm like, okay, where are they going with this? Because that's what I, mm -hmm. I felt. I, I could kind of see that character arc coming, and I was curious how they would go with it. And, you know, I was speculating initially that stratos was going to betray the masters of the universe like i really mm -hmm. felt they were setting him up for that he was at he was at odds with adam you know crass did not like him at all you know he was kind of he was that wild card right yeah and then he goes out and he starts recruiting traditionally evil warriors right he yeah. recruits Mes yeah. mesquitara he recruits web store he recruits Gary the Dragonfly, who is shown as, I don't know if he's shown as a villain necessarily, but he was definitely the antagonist for an episode. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know I messaged you after watching that episode where he gets he gets captured by Skeletor, and I'm like, is he under Skeletor's mind control? Is he going to join with Skeletor? Like, mm-hmm. I really felt like they were setting him up to be this this double crosser. And it was actually kind of surprising at the end there when he really played a pivotal role in the victory, you know, mm-hmm. by bringing his team together. So yeah. <laughs> it was an interesting arc for him. And honestly, I still want to know more. Like, he lets reveal mm-hmm. that his wings aren't natural. He's an avion yeah. by birth, but he doesn't have wings. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, is that like a, a known like, just some aren't born without wings? Or is that, like, you know, a uh, disability? Is it, Like, how, how normal is that? You know? Yeah. How do he win his kingship? He mentions that he won being the, the, the kingship. Like, so, mm-hmm. so for me, I guess, I guess it worked for me. He got humbled. He became a better person. And I want to know more about his backstory. Like, I, I think there's still a lot of intriguing elements left on the table there that I hope we find out more of. Well, he he's one of those characters that until he showed his soft underbelly with the whole thing, you know, him confessing his wings aren't natural, and and he's actually like, you know, what are they going to think of me if they find out I'm not like everybody else and all that? It's like, that's when you finally got me going, all right, I that's a, that's interesting, and all this bravado and ego he's is him... Overcompens- exactly, he's overcompensating for what he, he feels he's lacking in order to lead his people. Exactly. But it was it was very like that was just very tiring after one episode, <laughs> and then I thought, oh, how many more of these eight are he will he be in? But yeah, him doing that whole thing where he it, it almost reminded me of uh, of Deadpool two, where he recruits X Force. It's got this all these characters that are these you know the 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 misfits. Yeah. I'm going to get them all, and we're going to be the thing that saves the day. And I love when he shows up. It's all horribly done, and they're all, like, they show, um, yeah. like, I, I like how Web Store takes the place of Man-at-Arms Man in their intro, and it, Web Store shoots out the webbing, like Man-at-Arms shoots out the box. Yeah. And he ends up, like, everybody gets tied up in his spider webs. They're all hopping around through the rest of their trail, and I'm like... I love that it shows oh, none God. of these people came together actually like they trained. The masters trained in the right. first season so they could be a functional group and he just brings these people together just figuring I have people will win. Yes. Now. Oh, who knows? They everybody will fight each other. We'll oh, figure that, it out later. You know? That that see, yeah, he does the introductions <laughs> when he shows up in the final <laughs> battle there. They all do like the pose, like the intro yeah. for Adam and everybody. And then it's got the cardboard <laughs> straddles. The cardboard letters. And the heroic warriors and like heroic <laughs> falls off. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> no, I was dying. Yeah, it, like, like, it was great. I'm like, yes. <laughs> this is how you do comedy in a master's property like it's just like we had this huge battle of avion the, mm-hmm. the masters are getting their butts handed to them and then he pops up and does a silly intro it's like what a great well-timed tension breaker for the kids you know and and it was <laughs> funny like that's the thing it's mm-hmm. just it's 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 not derogatory it's none of that it's just it's it's humorous i'm like well, i was dying laughing even even uh, in that moment, I like the Skeletor when he shows up. Skeletor stops fighting. What am I looking at here? I love that right. that just takes him completely out of it. And I think uh, what, what you were just saying, it's a great way to segue into this. Comedy. Yes. This, this season, for me, and I, I know you heard me about this, but I was shocked at how much of the eight episodes yes. had more comedy than I would have ever expected because the first season, the comedy wasn't really like as broad as it is in this. It's very much like there are parts of episodes that are yes. filled with them and you're just sitting there going, this wasn't how it felt to watch first season. Like I, I can't think of a specific episode in the first season where it took that much out of it to really do a comedy piece. And here we are in season two where that actually, it rattled me. It actually mm-hmm. made me go like, I don't know if this is going to work for me going forward, depending 
they're like crossing a line of balance for me with the story, the tension, the the characterization. And all of a sudden we have moments like He-Man and, and Skeletor having to waltz with each other because yep. they're not allowed to be violent on a, on a train. Nah. To, <laughs> and then we have also Gary the Dragonfly, which yep. is a character that I, I've ranted about personally to Matt. But he's a character that for me, I'm like, why did they go there? Why couldn't they have done? Hey. My, my personal favorite would have been Spidor have Spidor show up, even though that's also then with a team with Web Store, which doesn't quite make well, sense, so I get why they didn't maybe go that route. But there's there's these things where I'm just like, okay, like, I don't know why we had to take such a veering I've, off into the right or into the left of how comedic this one is, especially I, when the stakes were raised as much as it was at the end of the season. Well, I think, I think, that, I think that's directly a part of it, honestly, because like we talked a little bit about, because season one ended on such a high stakes moment. Yeah, I feel they kind of overcompensated in the okay. We gotta we gotta bring this back down a little bit. You know, at at the heart of it, this is a show for children. I think the first season did a great yeah. job of having humorous moments. I want a panther for my or I want a, a battle cat for my birthday. That, you know, yeah, they had these know. great moments. But overall, it was an origin story and Skeletor winning. Like, there were some dark moments, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you told me when your son first saw Snake Mountain, he was literally yeah. creeped out. Yeah. So I think it's the team trying to find the right balance. Mm. And because season one was so high at the end of it, tension-wise, like, you can't, you can't keep that high that long in a kid's show you know supernatural you can get up that high and you can stay that high Mm -hmm. for the last five episodes of a season great yeah this is for kids house of shakoti you know we need to interject you know cringer hitting a one-liner here and there right or ram man yeah ram man Mm -hmm. somebody like we have to do something to break the tension for a minute let the kids know huh no it's okay they're still cracking jokes everything's gonna Mm -hmm. be fine you know, and I think that's kind of what this was, you know, in the decompressed storytelling era where instead of a line, you know, to break up Stanley getting wrapped up by Darklings and sucked through a door, which mm-hmm. should freak any kid out. It freaked me out. Mm-hmm. Instead of one line from Cringer to, to break that tension, okay, out of eight episodes, we got to throw an episode in here to just kind of... You know, oh, okay, like, they're, yeah. it's fun. And, I, now, I, granted, I didn't have, I also didn't have the same level of reaction as you did. <laughs> um, I will say, uh, let's start with He-Man Skeletor dancing. Because when I was watching this for the first time, um, obviously I wake up early in the morning, and I did have to work the day that it premiered. When I got home from work, before I had to pick the kids up, I did throw on the first episode. Watched the first episode, started the second, ended up dozing off during the second. Not to say it wasn't good, just I was tired. So, I wake up when the alarm goes off that I gotta go get my kids. <laughs> yeah. And all I see is He-Man and Skeletor dancing together. Yeah. Like, Okay, I don't even know what episode's on. I just turn it off, and I go get my kids. And I'm sitting there like, I was thrown by that. Mm. I was like, "What? Wh- where are they going with this? What are they turning this into? I think that was probably the closest mm. I got to your reaction, was waking up mm-hmm. out of context, seeing that scene. But then when I got there in the train episode, and they explained it, you know, mm-hmm. well, they, they they have to be nonviolent on the train, otherwise the, the whole train's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't stop the train, they can't be violent. Anything they do that's shown as, like, any sort of aggression towards a train equals kaboom. And they need that yeah. piece of the sigil of his. And when they get to that room, the robots are dancing. Yeah. Wrong. It yeah. worked for me. I, I don't know what to say. It worked. For, I'm like, see, yes, it's uh, yes, it's silly, but they gave me a reason. 
You know what I mean? And uh, real quick, sorry, just... And when He-Man Skeletor to get closer to the sigil piece, twirl me, please! Twirl Twirl me, please! please. Twirl me, please! (laughs) I mean, that's just... I I was laughing. I couldn't help it. I'm like, okay. Yes, it's stupid. It's silly. Yeah. But in-universe... It works, and that's that's my biggest thing. Always is does the logic hold up in universe? What what gets me, I think, more than anything is I think it wouldn't have bothered me so much if that wasn't the beginning of three episodes in a row, where I just sat there going, "That's my problem with this season." It's like the first episode. Sure. It was a fun adventure episode. You have, you have yeah, you know, the, the race with Stratos. And we get a new power for He-Man, which I wanted to bring up too, because yeah. that was actually really freaking cool with the surfing on the power sword because of how freaking big that thing gets on the, the show, which is great. Yeah, and but calling down the power he, to create the lightning so that he can surf on it. Riding the lightning and all that. Right. Yeah, I love it. It, worked, and, um, and it. it gave it limits too. Like, he can't just fly... But he's yeah. kind of—it's—it's it's more of a, I don't know, more of an ice man even. Like he creates the ice to surf on. Like He Man's creating yeah. the lightning to yeah, surf on. Basically. Not just—I can't just hang out air in the air like I'm my power sword. So yeah, I will but, say though, but before you move on, well, I know a lot of people did, and I did as well. They really messed up because that power sword on the toy attaches to He-Man's back with a peg. Yep. And the peg is not the same size as the foot peg. If they had to, <laughs> they, just think about that foresight I, of making the sword so that He-Man can actually, like, you can peg it and you can cruise him around. I actually, I want to say, if I remember right, it was Scott Baker... He posted in one of the groups they all he did was he just drilled just a little bit yes. into the foot and he got it that he could do that with his he now and he was the happiest person and I'm like, I don't blame you. Yes. But like we have we have the next episode is the train and we have the the waltz in part, which that I don't think would have bothered me so much if the next episode wasn't also the Gary the Dragonfly thing. And okay. then the episode after that is right. then Skeletor's birthday. So Gar- Gary the which, Dragonfly. I, I will say, before we hit that one, I will say that uh, you and some others were the ones to go, look, give that Skeletor's birthday one another look, because you're just it, it, you're coming out of a streak yeah. of these episodes having so much comedy. And when I watched that by itself with my son, mm-hmm. like the next day, I'm like, this actually is a really good episode because it, it not only is it fun to see Skeletor in a situation that yep. he can't get his way out of and he's just dealing with it, but Duncan gets the, the spotlight yes. and it's a better episode for him than anything they did in the episode where he he started Orko up in the season right. one. No, so I, uh, completely I, like that episode more this time around. That that I'll I'll take it away from being too comedic it is funny but it's got good moments yeah but and it's yeah, and it's got some fly. let's do this well, <laughs> well you don't a little deeper into skeletor's birthday so we'll start there so yeah so they start okay. off the episode in the palace right and and again i don't know if it was just the mood i was in that day but like i was cracking up the whole way through like skeletor's birthday is one of the top episodes of the season for me because i think they really hit the comedy in that but at the same time, so, you know, it's starting with Skeletor's birthday, and he's making everybody give him gifts. And, you know, yep. he's upset about not getting a battle kit. I said I want a battle kit. I said I want a battle yeah. kit. Like, <laughs> why isn't, you know, and, and, and think about it from the kids' aspect. Like, how many birthdays did you have where you're sitting there like, these are cool presents, but I didn't get the thing I wanted. Right? Yeah. Like, again, for the kids, that's a great, like, dude, I get that, Skeletor. Like, you and me, we're, you know... <laughs> I got you. So, yeah. and then, and then the introduction of the 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 Panthor cycle, which mm-hmm. they call Pain Thor in Pain the series, Thor, yes. which is interesting because I actually had to go check my box, and he has that cycle has always been called Pain Thor mm-hmm. with the I in there. I guess because it actually has both. It's got Panthor, and then underneath it's got Pain Thor. 
So I was just assuming that, you know, Panthor was the English and then like the foreign language, you know, like it was a dual language box and there's mm -hmm. a country that calls him Panthor, but apparently mm -hmm. it must be the other way around. I don't know. It's like really weird because it's got both names on the box there. And then the newer mini one that they made has only the Panthor, which again, I even had that. Before I saw this episode, and I still never picked up on the pain Thor part of it. I I like that they did that. I, I still don't have that uh, set, but I like that they did that. And when he said that on the show, I was like, I wonder if I wonder if that's you know it, that was the first thing I did. Or if that was an accident or whatever. So, but I I, I absolutely love how you know Trap Dog does the whole. Let me show you this and. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, and they're tying. It, it's it's doing the 2000X deal where it's making these accessories actually pay off in this show. So it's not just some random thing that's on the toy shelf. There's actually a reason they put out this right. motorcycle for Skeletor, and it actually works. And I I, I like it. I like the yeah. idea of like you know, okay, not everything in the series has to be a direct like He Man's got a cat, Skeletor's got a cat. Like you know what I like mm -hmm. the the vibes. Like there's a little bit of all right, well, He-Man's got a cat. We'll give Skeletor a motorcycle that, you know, with a cat theme, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so then when he, you know, in the whole story with the Wishing Stone and Duncan trying to figure out how the teleporter on Grayskull works, and the whole mm -hmm. kind of, I mean, just the fact that they made Grayskull in the series, and I know we talked about it in Season 1, but they really kind of hit that old magic and technology, you know, Mary yeah. aspect because obviously magic fuels it like that's the power source but like Duncan can work on it like it's it's a mm -hmm. it's a technical application of magic so mm -hmm. and I really like that that they've really got into the core of masters in my opinion because a lot of this reboot stuff either likes to go really magical or really technological but this one's like no it's it's both of them that's the world um mm -hmm. and yeah with skeletor and duncan finding themselves in this kind of in between negative zone and yeah. realizing like skeletor is smart enough in the series to realize like hey i can't just kill this kid because we've also got to get out of here and he yeah. got he got the castle here so i got to be able to get you know, I, I need him to get out of here. Like, Skeletor is not stupid enough to kill his only chance at getting home. You know? Mm -hmm. And the Wish Stone. The Wish Stone is a great plot device. You know? And, and it's got limitations. It's one wish per person. Skeletor won't let Duncan use it because he's worried that Duncan will just wish that Skeletor doesn't exist. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, you know? And so he gets rid of the Wish Stone. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like, this... Skeletor is written so well in this series. He, he is fast becoming my favorite Skeletor. I know I was on the fence in season one, and he was really high up there, but by the end of the series, he might overtake Filmation for me. Because he's, no, he's, he's He's smart, he's humorous, he's evil, he's calculating. Like, uh, uh, you know... He's threatening. He's threatening. Too. Yeah. But he's, he's but he's not threatening to the point kids. of, you know, where like like filmation where he'll actually work against himself to not help the heroes. You know, I mean, he's in the situation. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, I gotta I gotta help Duncan because we need to get out of there, and then I'll kill him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's yeah. it, it, it's so smartly written, and yeah, the the jokes and everything and the the knowledge and I was I was cracking up. This episode was one of my tops. Well, I even liked it uh, with that episode. Uh, he's looking around and sizing up what it's like to be in Grayskull, and he, he just he looks at that painting yep. of uh, of the masters and the evil warriors going head to head. And him going, why doesn't she have a a, a, a rival? You know, yeah, like nemesis. Points at Ram Bam. Well, he, she doesn't have a nemesis. What's up with that? You know, yeah. and, all, and and then uh, you know, like he, he's looking around and his point of view talking about things matches probably some of the audience's point of view so you're getting to hear an right. adult version talking about the the curiosities around them that are what's this about what about that why why would they do it that way and yeah. all that and i i enjoyed 
seeing that and having him size it up and everything. I like the, uh, <laughs> it's a stupid joke from season one. It's stupid here too, but it still made me laugh when he's like, where's the bathroom? And Duncan's like, yeah, yeah. good luck if you can figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been in here this whole time and you still haven't found the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> See that that's humor I could deal with. I don't right. know why. I could handle I don't know. That it works. the bathroom in that <laughs> season, but but let, let's okay, let's talk about the uh the, the dragonfly in the room, uh, Dra- Gary the Dragonfly because he wanted to go there before I shifted yes, us yes, into yes. the well, birthday. One, party. one last thing about the birth the Skeletor's birthday. Obviously it was a fun funny episode. It was the highest comedy episode of the season, but it still advanced the story. And it still dropped hints at what, you know, like you said, Skeletor pointed out that he there's no fifth nemesis, you know. Mm-hmm. Them learning more about the castle and how the teleportation works <coughs> and that they can use the mm-hmm. Havoc power to do it. And even the whole kind of timeline thing, right, was smart because this episode takes place at the exact same time as the Gary the Dragonfly episode. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, and it actually and, even starts off with the same exact scene. They did the whole and, yeah. sliding door thing, you know. Yeah. When this se- when this episode starts and it's it's Adam and them leaving to go help Tila, it's like wait that we just saw that, but then it stays with Duncan this time, and it's like yeah, it's kind of that question right where a lot of shows you're like, well while they were doing this, why weren't it, why wasn't anyone else progressing anything? And it's like they mm-hmm. weren't. You know, we actually got yeah. to see it real time. So that was a really mm-hmm. neat thing, that continuity there. And then it mm-hmm. ends with everyone showing back up from that. Like, oh, you, you've you been up to nothing, huh, Duncan? And he's had this whole adventure. Mm-hmm. And that, I will say that uh, the way they started the episode, actually, that was where my son was like, I'm good, we can watch the rest tomorrow, because he thought that there was a glitch in Netflix, and it was playing the, the episode, episode we just watched again. And and he figured instead of having me have to, you know, troubleshoot, I'll just turn it off so Daddy doesn't get frustrated. <laughs> or something. So we ended up watching, and we did it like four episodes one day, four episodes the next day. It, it, this time around, yeah. instead. But uh, but yeah. All right. So so Gary the Dragonfly. Gary the Dragonfly. This is another episode. <laughs> I I I felt this was a very filmation inspired episode. That's what that's what I, agree with I that. came across away from that with, and um, you know it's it sees it sees a Tila Evelyn team up, right? Mm-hmm. It's got uh, you know <coughs> they're going after the second piece of the sigil of his, and you know they find out that this dragonfly has eaten it and gotten mutated. And, you know, he's he's attracted to the power now. He's trying to find other things of power to eat. Like, yeah. I don't know. The, the whole concept just felt so filmation to me. Gary the Dragonfly himself, I... I see, now, and I, I, I... It's funny that you go, well, they should have gone with Spidor, right? Because when he first showed up on screen, I'm like, oh, it's like he's a real-life uh, fright fighter. Well, yeah, you know that would have been fine too. For Which some is reason, like, I guess. Well, that's what I said. That's where I went. Was like, oh, yeah. they did a dragonfly because of the vintage vehicle shaped like a dragonfly, like deep cut, cool. But they yeah. made him alive yeah. and with with a personality, with that very unique. What I thought watching it was was a Bobcat Goldthwait impression, right? Like I'm like, oh man, they're really hitting that bobcat voice hard and then credits roll and it's like oh no they actually got bobcat Mm -hmm. to voice (laughs) him yep which is kind of an interesting pull and i don't know if there's that's the part that kind of had me scratching my head i'm like why did you go there i guess is there some Mm -hmm. connection that i'm still missing between bobcat Mm -hmm. and this the series or the franchise or I don't know. Like it was just, it was just kind of a weird pull for me. But that's probably the mm-hmm. biggest thing I can say is that his voice really threw me. And if I could change something, it would probably be to give him a more threatening voice. 
But then again, mm-hmm. they did kind of turn around at the end and make him a bit more heroic. He joined Stratos' cause. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I guess it didn't bother me because we we're getting this good Tila Evelyn, you know, Witch and the Warrior story. You know, we had mm-hmm. He Man, you know, not making the best decisions, and him and Tila getting a little strained there because, you know, He Man won't tell her that Eldris didn't reappear with the castle like she got lost somewhere along the way and uh ah, there just there was enough good moments advanced in the story that i'm like okay i can deal with a bumbling dragonfly character that's so it's one that um like I, I said before we started recording i only watched this this season through once since it's aired yeah, and i've only I've, I've watched seen, a couple episodes um, a second time but not the whole thing well i i've seen it, it what, what's funny to me is uh, talking about like the height heightened mm-hmm. stuff that we were yeah, with the, how the story works. The one episode that my son has rewatched more than once since we've seen the whole season is the final episode. Yeah, and he just keeps going back to that. And when my kids and I sat and watched that together, the very first time they watched it, they all, both of them looked at me and they go. I feel so bad for He Man right now, and I'm like, I know, because I, like, it, it's like the it, that's kind of why my frustration is there yeah. with the middle of this season being the way it is, because the first episode's a fun adventure episode, the second episode has some moments, but you know, it's it's got that comedy in there that it's like, okay, it's different, but all right, you get into the birthday Skeletor episode. I think you mean the thir- third episode because the second episode is them going to Snake Mountain and finding the first piece. Oh, okay. So then I got my, my yeah. whole the, timeline. The, then the up. third episode is the train. Third and episode is the train. And yeah. All that. So, yeah, it's like you have the third, fourth, and fifth episodes then being those middle yeah. episodes. And it's like they're bookended with these really fun or very dramatic yeah. moments in this show like the turn at the end of this season i was texting you watching it yeah and using language we don't use on the show very often right and i'm just like they're doing this this is this is some stuff where i just sat there with my jaw on the floor going not only are they referencing 2000 x on here because the minute that skeletor goes do you know what that gem is in your helmet to ram ma'am and all that stuff and suddenly we're talking about the Ram Stone, which is one of my favorite artifacts from 2000X because it knocks the power of Grayskull the hell out of Adam every time. Yep. But it's also now we're going down this whole thing of not only did they manage to get rid of Skeletor, but now he's a ghost that's haunting Ram Ma'am, Kraz. And now this is a bigger problem because now Kraz goes on this. That whole thing, I was just sitting there going, this is everything I wanted to see in this season. And I didn't know I wanted it. Yeah. But we have Gary the Dragonfly, too. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I don't know why that one bugs me the way it does. But I just feel like that one, to me, is the one I can point to the easiest as this is kind of where I don't want them to go as much next time around. Please keep it more even killed towards you can do comedy and adventure. Yep. Like I, I still love the first episode where like Adam's trying to get the cub and he, he's yep. there like, you're, you're off trying to get, you're trying to eat a potato. I don't even know what a potato is and all that stuff. And I'm like, that's fine. That, that didn't bother me, but these bumbling characters like, Gary the Dragonfly just for me are they're too like well, I'm guess, not a fan of the filmation ones that do that I mean I could deal with Ram Man uh, Ram Man being that character but right. when you have that on the show itself uh, even as a kid I was like I, just, I don't want to see this on this show that's just me well I guess that's part so. of the other thing too I was going to say right like even I didn't mind the character but like why Gary and why Bobcat yeah. as the voice actor like give him yeah. a threatening voice give him something more insectoid like you know waspinator style so Mm -hmm. and then give him give him a i mean granted we have adam but i don't know like gary is just like especially for a monstrous dragonfly like just just give him a better name a more fantasy name right 
Well, and the other thing I think, and this is probably why I have the issue with it, is we already we we get very little time with uh, Muskitara. Yes, uh, is her name? Yep. And suddenly, here's this character that lives off of eating power, and it's like, well, that's kind of what she's doing. Why? At least she takes the power. She yeah she siphons that. So why are we having another character that that's their purpose when she should be the? It, it would have been kind of cool. They could have had all three women on that episode then, have it be them versus Muskitara then, and give her a little more of a spotlight, because she was only in the train episode, and then she shows up as part of Stratos' group later on, right. and it's like, well, that wasn't really that big of a that, of an introduction that, that, that was, we were expecting. You know? That was probably the biggest surprise to me, is how little she was in the season, and how little mm-hmm. consequence she was. Because that train episode, I thought the same thing. I'm like, Oh, you're setting her up to really be like a player here, because like, yeah. like she can sense the power, she she knows the power, right? She can tell the difference between Grayskull and Havoc. She's the mm-hmm. first one that says something to Ram Man, kind of making her like, exactly, is something yeah. going on? And so I, the same time, like, oh, she's gonna be like, you know, this this wild card Pivotal. in this, yeah. And then she wasn't. And she ended up joining Stratos. And, and I, I mean, I know that that is the funny part of the season, but like when they had that whole thing where he's getting all these characters, I honestly, I was kind of underwhelmed by that. I, I was I was amused by it. Yeah. But I was also underwhelmed because here we have Web Store showing I, up, and now Web Store just got relegated to being this co you know co team member. Yeah. Which I the only thing about that, that I thought was cool was. Webster actually wasn't a villain. Webster just kind of was doing Webster's yeah, own thing. Very beast. And yeah, and it, it just all of those characters then just kind of like just got put into this this yeah. group, and then it just kind of made any individuality of them just kind of go. It, it's now they're just part of this crew. Well, and I, ah, so I'm I, I'm hoping that this isn't the end of them. I'm hoping is. Yeah. We get some more development, and I hope they go evil. Honestly, I was that's honestly what I was expecting. I was expecting, like, Stratos to show up with all these guys, and then they're like, all right, well, we're going to help Skeletor because we want the power. Yeah. And, yeah. like, it completely backfire in Stratos's face, and that being his humbling moment. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I really screwed up here. Let me make it right. That's where I thought it was going, and I was surprised it didn't go that way. But I still mm-hmm. hope that there's a chance for that turn, because I think I think it does. We- especially Web Store and Miskitara, I think it, like you said, kind of devalues their character just having them be Stratos's backup. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping we see yeah, some more, more of that. Well, the more the more I think about that, the more I feel like I really wanted. I really wish we would have had the three women there on that episode instead yeah. of Gary, because that would have been. That would have been yeah. a, a hell of a thing, and then that would have made it like, okay, she's somebody that then Tila would go, we need her on our side, Evelyn going, we need her on Skeletor's side, then she would be a commodity, right. versus there she is just as, okay, now she's a fill-in of a number in Stratos' group, and so I, maybe that's part of, like, on a, on a deeper level, that's part of what bothered me about that, because I, I was actually looking forward to Miss Guitar showing up and doing more. And it's like the only the only characters that were introduced that got more time were Manny Faces and Stratos. And Manny Faces, the, the really weird thing about this season is I was really pumped for Manny Faces. And half the time they, I forget he was even in the season. They took him a really weird way with him yeah. being the whole... Um, Oh, dang it, I can't think of his name. But like from Oliver Twist, right? That guy that kind of runs... Uh, the, the Gideon. Earth. Gideon, yes. Like that's kind of yeah. where they... T- like He's the king of below. Bring me your yeah. orphans and your street urchins. And like that was a really weird spin on it. Yeah. But at the same time, I think my biggest problem with Manny Faces is I feel like we came up with a really good CGI origin for him. <laughs> And exactly. this wasn't that at all. So, uh, not well, f- and the other. Go ahead. I just I I didn't view Manny as a leader character at any time. 
right? No. So that's that really threw me. I liked his transformations. I like how his personality kind of went with it. You know, the monster, the robot, the man. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it gave you a bit of history with him being King Miro's in King, a part of King Miro's court, you know, Randor's father, and him getting mm-hmm. banished, and like, all right, okay, it, it, and it put him back potentially in the time of the original Orko and everything else. Like, he could be kind of the link between, like, hey, don't you remember the old heroes? You know? Mm-hmm. So I kind of liked those aspects, but I just thought our version of, like, you know, the monster is created by Skeletor infusing him with havoc, and, you know... Mm-hmm. Tila using Grayskull to bring him back and then both making him become the, the robot. Like, I just thought yeah. it was a perfect setup for that origin in this series. And so I was, I guess it's that, it's that I set myself up for disappointment because of what we came up with. He, he became this understated character yeah. through the season for me. And I mean, honestly, I, I I'll admit too, like, um, the uh, the majority of the fun of the season came from the A team plot, which to me the A team plot is Adam Duncan and Ram Man and Cringer, Ram Man and Cringer doing their stuff. Versus when you're back in, at Eternos, you only have Tila and Orko to play around with, and yeah, King Randor's in the mix, and it's it's good to see Randor still embracing. They're here to help. He's embracing the Masters right. as being a, a team for good. But uh, there's not as much interest in that story now that they've paired them off compared to last season. You had the whole team together, and the story just was like on all cylinders for me. When you take teams apart sometimes, there is going to be a lesser interest in part. And for me, it was the Tila Orko Manny Faces bit, even though that's how he was introduced. Oh, but absolutely. I did. I didn't mind at least that you had uh, Manny Faces and Orko kind of like being buddies. And like, if it wasn't for Manny Faces, the Orkening would have never happened. Which that actually was a pretty fun moment. And that's oh, where sure. could, that comedy worked for me. Like the Orkening is upon. I, I was laughing. My kids even were like. This is fun. I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of humor and, that works for me on that. Yeah, they, they creating the Trollins was, was yeah. a really fun moment, turning all those drones into Orcos, you know. And then even mm-hmm. at the end there, they say, yeah, we found them a place on the, I think it was the Plains of Perpetua, for them to make new yeah. Trolla. Like, okay, we're actually setting up the robot Orco, you know, and the robot Trollins as a faction. So that was really mm-hmm. cool. And then Duncan, and I loved it too because Duncan shows up and he's like, he sees all the 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 trolling bots <laughs> yeah. now. And he's like, I miss the Orkanine. Like yeah. this is something they yeah. had talked <laughs> about being a potential. Like, <laughs> and he's sad at all. Yeah, he's sad because he's he's, 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 he's he's the machines guy. He does machines. Yeah, you know exactly. So exactly. Yeah, there was great moments, great growth. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Manny Faces was kind of an intro. I'm curious to see where they go with him from here. It definitely was not the role I thought he was going to play. Oh, uh, well, one one quick thing about him though is I did think it was funny that when he met Evil Lynn, he's like, "I found my muse," and he's like kind yeah. of attracted to her. So there's the implication of me, you know, maybe she will turn, or maybe maybe that will turn him, and then it'll be a problem for the masters you know? well even but. in the it was kind of interesting too at the at the the final battle there once everyone gets their stuff figured out you know stratos and his heroic warriors figure out their role in this and that he doesn't have to be the leader of everything right yeah <laughs> and you know and skeletor's hurt and weakened and Trapjaw and Beastman like turn immediately on skeletor once that that control mm-hmm. kind of wanes a little bit they're like that that was kind of a disappointment for me too, honestly. Because oh, okay. yeah, I I don't know. I like. I guess I didn't feel up till now that everything, like they were only loyal to Skeletor because of the Havoc control. You know what I mean? Like especially Beastman. I really felt that Beastman was on Skeletor's side, a part of his cause, right? Um, and I kind of took that whole chain thing as more like 
okay, you guys can't double cross me like for your own power. I don't know, it's just kind of weird to see them instantly be like, nope, sorry, Skeletor, like we're not with you on this at all. Well, I mean, Cronus has been established since the first episode that he, he and Evil Lynn were trying to have a coup against Keldor back in the day. Yeah, but that's they where they were going to eventually. make it work yeah. once Keldor was gone. And then, and then uh, they had the episode, which uh, that was the birthday episode, where Beastman and Trapjaw were basically like Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighting each other and that was video fun. game style yeah. in the... In the uh, in the palace because they both were challenging each other for the throne. But that automatically let me go like, that makes sense that, that time, right. because they're both wanting what Skeletor has, whether Skeletor is there or not. So, and, and like when, when, uh, when they looked at Skeletor and he's weak and, and beast man was the one to say, it, you know, you're weak, you, you know, jungle law, you know, to be, you wouldn't survive. And he, he, he takes that as like his, you know, I'm the beast man in the jungle. We would eat you because you're the weak one, and and the strong should survive. So when they did that, I'm like, makes sense to me. Well, never, I guess, never doubted that for a second. I guess that's what. Um, for me, it's like okay, yeah. When Skeletor is gone, and Beast Man and Trapped are left with an empty throne, not knowing if Skeletor is coming back. Yes, they're gonna fight each other because they both want to be in mm-hmm. charge with Skeletor gone. But to me, that's different from we're going to help the Masters because mm-hmm. they don't win, as we see. Like, they they are instrumental in defeating Skeletor, and where do they wind up? In a prison cell. Yeah. So I yeah. guess that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. It's like, I can see Trapjaw claiming the power for himself. I can see Beastman trying to claim the power for him. Evil Lynn, like, yes, they have always conspired against Skeletor, but mm-hmm. in that situation... The only one that wins is the Masters. So how is that helping them, I guess? You know what I mean? Well, like, I, 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 Honestly, though, the way I look at that, too, is it helps them because they're out from under him being that guy. Because, like you said, you didn't think the chains meant what that meant, apparently, right. based on how this worked out. So the, these characters are characters that they did that against... It, he it, Skeletor did that to them against their own will. So the fact they had no say in what he was doing and that he controlled them the way he did, it makes complete sense yeah. that they don't want this that way. That like Cronus would want to do it on his own terms, not just being trapped on and being shackled to Skeletor's power and havoc and stuff. And Beast Man is just like, here is the inside of what R- Rick has is, but he's still that character, whether or without the look of it, because he was a horrible person to begin with. So I, I understand where you're coming from about that, but at the same time, at the story, I'm like, based on where they are, the only place they could go is get the hell away from Skeletor so that he can't do that to them. Even if they're in prison, they're better off than being shackled to the power of Havoc because that was something they'd never signed yeah. up for. Yeah, I that suppose. was uh, and not to not to be, but uh, I mean, that's basically non-consensual, right there. <laughs> you might as well just figure. They, yeah. These people well, do guess, not want to have that. Yeah. Like I said, I guess I assumed that it was less like complete control. It was more just like, yeah. hey, at the end of the day, I, I have control over you. But, you know, exactly. I think even the, even the palace guard kind of at the, you know, uh, Tuvar and Badra were kind of going like, you know, are we doing this completely because of mind control or do we want to? Or, you know, like there was that question of, how mm-hmm. is he influencing them or is he outright like you will do this yes i will do yeah. this you know what i mean yeah. um yeah which i thought also kind of set up the question of what, when or how tuvar and badra are going to merge and turn on everybody but as we've seen in this series they could even become too bad and not necessarily be bad so. And, and and the thing is, I figured they would have been a shoe in for season two, and look where we I didn't even so get too. that happening. So I'm yep. kind of impressed they didn't go there, to be honest. So I guess the only thing really left that I want to hit on <clears throat> this is Ram Mam, as Sean alluded to yeah. earlier. Mm-hmm. And actually, this this one I kind of called earlier in the season. I thought. Uh, I thought either Stratos or Ram Mam or possibly both were going to betray 
the Heroic Warriors. And uh, sure enough, Ram Mam does go off the deep end at the end of this season. Um, mm-hmm. uh, like, with Skeletor's help. <laughs> with Skeletor's help. Yes, the as we find out, that stone that's always been lodged in her helmet that she got from her father, it is a Ram Stone. And basically, mm-hmm. Ram Stones in this canon... Uh, harness the power of havoc naturally so she has always been dipping into both pools Mm -hmm. um and it kind of it's 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 up to her which side she gives into again setting up havoc and grayskull as the light side dark side of the magical universe yeah and you know it's it, it, she's always kind of had that right ram man crass crastine as we find out i think that's new to this season her full name being mm-hmm. crastine but i always loved it when mm-hmm. cringer would call it, crastine what are you doing yeah. you know like the mm-hmm. dad uh you know i was in trouble when everyone called me matthew so mm-hmm. <laughs> uh like i said I, I it's not that i didn't see it coming but still when it happened I was like, oh my god, they, they, they did it. And she full on, mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking separate transformation. You know, she goes into the mm-hmm. Havoc waters like we always saw Skeletor in them do. And she comes out as Rampage, which I thought was a yeah. hilarious, clever name. Um, I loved it. Yeah. I, lo- I love that she gets christened a new name mm-hmm. and she's now the evil lord of uh, destruction. Yep. Or, 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 was it, it just, wasn't demolition, right? Demolition, I think it was. Okay, the evil lord of demolition. And it's like, my God. Like, the minute that happened, it, it's it's funny. I'm watching this kid's show and my heart sunk. Because I'm like, I, I like her yeah. as a hero and I liked her as kind of like Adam's surrogate, like, like a basically sister. adopted sister mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and here it's like no like my kid said the moment that he man is trying to talk her back from mm-hmm. what she did like my heart literally was breaking with his it's like, yep whew, yeah was, and when he, see, when he sees when he sees there's no reaching her and everything and she's yeah. got the whole ghost skeleton in her head like just goading her and everything else and it's like and it's like, you want to say it's not all her, and it's not, because Skeletor, as he was dying from the final battle there when they destroyed the Havoc Staff, he kind of leached his essence onto the Ramstone and got in her yeah. head, very Revelation style, which I thought was yeah. a nice little throwback. But, uh, but then again, at the end of the day, like I said, you look back and it's like, this isn't completely out of left field. She was always the one, she broke off from them season one to go back to the Tiger Tribe. You know, she doesn't like the way Adam's handling the Stratos issue. Like, she's always kind of been that squeaky wheel out of the group. She's got no nemesis and every. you know what I mean? Like, you know, mm-hmm. basically she's her own nemesis, right? She's her own worst enemy. She's got these two sides and she's fighting between them. And yeah. I thought it was a marvelous turn. It, it was well done. And it sets you up to where, like, where's this going to go? Can she be brought back? Can she be redeemed? And I got to say, I think this was planned from the start. And I mm-hmm. think this is one of the big reasons that they did not just use Ram Man. And they kind of made her her own character. Because imagine the outcry. And we've heard it before. Mm-hmm. You know, Scooby-Doo movie, they made Scrappy-Doo evil. Uh, mm-hmm. Reboot Thundercats, they made Pumira evil. You know, mm-hmm. whenever they do that to an established character, we always hear the fan outcry, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think that is probably the biggest reason that they made Ram Mam instead of Ram Man, is so mm-hmm. that they could flip the script without having our, the, us vintage fans go, whoa, 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 Ram Man would never do that. You know what Agreed. I mean? Yeah. Yep. Oh, but so good. And then at the end, you know, that's the thing, too. Like, we, I thought Skeletor was going to get the sigil of his completed. I thought he was going to raise the Snake Men and win again, and that never happened. The Masters nope. won against Skeletor. The problem was they didn't see Ram Page coming, and she's nope. able to complete the sigil of his. 
she's able to raise the dead, Snake Man. Yeah. And she is kind of under the assumption that she can use this sigil to bring her parents back as well. Which I mm-hmm. thought, you know, I messaged Sean, he can verify. I thought earlier in the mm-hmm. season that that's how Skeletor was going to get his hooks into her. I thought that he brainwashed Stratos when he had him captured, and I thought he was going to manipulate R- Crass by using her dead parents and the potential of raising them with this sigil. So, 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, I guess that that's kind of... So, uh, do you feel... Uh, now, after her completing the sigil of his... And the Snake Men rising up immediately and kind of doing this all-out attack on the various areas that were left with that cliffhanger. I think Skeletor is completely lying to her and that there is no way um, that this can raise... I think the Sigil just raises Snake Men. You know what I mean? I I, w- I mean, it's it makes sense because... It's it's called the sigil of his. I don't think it's going to be used to right. bring back other people personally. So, I guess we'll find out. But it seems like it's just targeting Snake Man. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one more burning question that I'm left with that I was just reminded of talking about Chris's dead parents. They still haven't confirmed Marlena's status, as far as they I can tell. Will- they referenced her, and that was about the extent yeah. of it. Because it, they do name drop Marlena, mm-hmm. and and Randor talks a little bit about her to Adam right. once they're in the palace and everything's hunky dory for five minutes. But uh, yeah, they don't really get into that, and they don't get into where she is or if she's dead or yeah, what th- is the deal. I think the prevailing fan theory is that she's dead, which. You know, if the sigil can raise anybody, like, this might be a temptation for Adam in the next season Mm -hmm. as well. So that could be Mm -hmm. interesting. But I I do find it odd that they have not confirmed anything on her. uh, We saw her picture in the first season. They mention her here, but they don't really go into her status. And even Adam says that he has a hard time remembering her, even though he says some of his other memories are kind of trickling back you know as Mm -hmm. a young child so i thought i think the deck's going towards she's passed but it's just odd that they haven't confirmed that yet yeah i'm i'm curious about that one because there's there's a few things even with that family portrait they have that pillow there that people assume maybe a dora would have been there and and she also looks sad in that image she does look so the idea that maybe you know a dora was taking taken from her already That's she's mourning the loss of her of her daughter but there's adam and there's killed or it's like there's definitely hints there that it makes season three feel like they need to do something further than that because yeah. that's a whole nother story to dig into after the build-up of what they're doing in season two going into that one right and I'm, i personally would be f- happy finding out some answers too so right all right any any other uh, final thoughts you have on the series? Um, I, I I mean for this one, it, I I actually I got really quick here. Uh, for this one, uh, first season I, I gave that one either a nine or a ten because I was completely blown away by how much I loved it. This one I would probably give a, a, a seven or an eight out of 10 because like I said some of that comedy is a little more than I wanted to see and it was overplayed a bit but some of the points they did like I said like when when we got to the ending of this season I was I was literally heartbroken watching He-Man see his adoptive sister turn to the dark side and it, it like there's there's something in that voice acting and I, I'm, I, I feel bad. I don't know the, the actor's name for him, man. But yeah. there's this moment where he's like, if it involves my best friend, it very much does. And the way he says that hits me every time because it makes me think of, like, you know, all the, the times in my past of dealing with friends when you have a fallout or even with yeah. kids. So sure. uh, the, the, the one quick thing I want to say, though, is I really wish Netflix did not give five-minute uh, trailer. Uh, they they gave you five minute 
parts of the episodes. Yeah. And I'm typically somebody that I don't care. But this show showed me I don't need to do that next time around because yeah. I watched two or three of them. And after that, I'm like, oh, here's a fourth one. I'm not watching this because I've seen almost the whole episode now. Right. So uh, I, I appreciate they do it. I'm not going to do it. I, don't, I didn't so. watch any of them. So Yeah, I know you, but I'm, I'm the dumb one. So. I guess. <laughs> For this season, I'm going to go an 8 out of 10 as well. It is obviously the middle of the season, yes. which I think overall it'll be helped by how it ends or possibly hurt depending on how it goes. Um. There were a couple missteps, but overall, I liked where they went. They raised some good, um, some good point plot points. They solved some mysteries, left us on another cliffhanger. Um, again, I was very surprised that the Snake Man number one was just the tail, the the stinger of the season, basically, yeah. and it featured so prominently in the trailer. So that was interesting, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a good season, and and they no way homed me. Mm-hmm. Where I again, I I and I was, I had come to terms with the fact that Adam doesn't have a secret identity in this series, even though I love yeah. the secret identity, <laughs> and I think That's it right. really adds a lot to it. And then at the end, when Randor, you know, welcomes them back into the palace. You know, he does the parade with them powered up, and then when they mm-hmm. they do the in the palace thing where he's Adam and he's introducing the long lost prince, and Rand Adam's like, "Well, why don't you want them to know I'm He Man?" And Randor's like, "Trust me, it's better this way. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's hard. We're bringing the power of school we back after all yeah. these years. We don't need everyone to know that the prince is He Man." Mm-hmm. So I'm like, "You son of a gun! You did it!" You did it. You, you're giving me a little bit. Now, Grant, it's still a bigger group that knows the secret, but I'm like, you know what? I can live with this. It's a compromise. Yeah. You didn't completely mm-hmm. throw it out the water, but it's it's more Power Rangers, in my opinion. Like, the team knows it. The villains mm-hmm. know the secret identity, you know, in Power Rangers as well, but the general public doesn't. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I can live with this. We can have some yeah. fun secret identity shenanigans and we can still have, you know, the larger group knowing it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. We got to take off. Sean's got a jet yeah. right now. So, Sean, until next <laughs> time, everybody like, until share, subscribe, time. and we will see you later. Oh, come on. Oh!